So in this video I'll be showing solutions I found to two major problems with modular tiles, namely the need for card tabs to support upper floors securely and being stuck with one colour and texture for modular rooftops. Oh, and I show some new tiles and a pretty little cottage. Something for everyone. Welcome to the archive. My name's Matt. The problem with using magnets exclusively to connect floor and wall tiles is something that I've mentioned has problems in the past, partially problems in hiding them, but also in keeping the upper floors stable when picking them up so they don't fall apart. This is why I've avoided removing the card tabs or barbecue skewers from my systems entirely. They give a very stable connection system that's rigid enough to place heavy minis on without worrying. But they do leave these unsightly holes at the sides of the building, which I've never liked and I've always wanted to remove. When I was adding magnets to the tiles in the cave video, I actually realised there's a reasonably easy solution to this. The problem with upper floors isn't really the connection from floor to wall, because those you can keep stable pretty easily by picking up the floor by holding, well, the floor bit. The problem lies with the floor to floor connections. These connections are the most likely to give way under heavy models, or when picking a floor up, simply because there's more force levered on the connection. Well, there is on larger floors anyway. I've tried to solve this problem in two ways. The first is the easiest and will work in most circumstances. By making sure the floor magnets are flush with the edge of the floor piece and not covered by a layer of hot glue or anything like that like I've sometimes shown on my other tiles, the connections are far stronger. Combined with holding the piece by the floor area, this is enough to allow you to remove upper floors without any trouble, generally speaking. This doesn't totally solve the problem of heavy models on larger, wider floors, which is where the second plan comes in. Which basically boils down to keep the card tabs, but only for floor tiles and only for the ones that you intend to use for upper floors. This means at least half your floor tiles no longer need card tabs and absolutely none of your walls do. By stabilising the floor to floor connections, it doesn't matter that the walls are connected by magnets, the middle will stay stable even with heavy models. To add magnets like this to existing floor tiles, or to new ones for that matter, I added magnets slightly off to the edges just like on the cave tiles that I've shown before. Which means that if you have tiles halfway across one another, they won't end up pushing each other apart, which is kind of useful. Now I've shown how to add magnets in a lot of other videos, including the magnetic building system linked below. But I thought I'd mention a few tricks that I've started using more recently that might make it a bit easier for you guys. Firstly, I found it useful to trim down the nail on my forefinger ever so slightly less. It makes separating the magnets a hell of a lot more comfortable, and then I just trim it down when I'm done. Secondly, I now do all of the north poles at once, and have a spare tile nearby. By sticking all of your magnets to one of the south poles on the finished tile, and pulling one off, the north pole is now exposed, for you to stick onto a bit of blue tack on a cocktail stick. Which means when you use that stick to push the magnet in and then pull the blue tack away, the north side is pointing out. Then do the exact same thing with the south. Trust me, it's a lot less confusing than switching between poles all the damn time. Adding magnets to the walls is pretty similar, having the magnet being basically exposed but painting it with some black and mod podge to look like a cast iron bolt of some description. I will be showing updated stone and wood walls in a future video, but I really did not have the time in this video. But the location and the procedure with the magnets is pretty much the same. It's just how you go about hiding it that's going to be different. I used this technique in the walls for the cottage. I'll be showing two different versions of how to make this, the quick way and the detailed way, but I'll start with the detailed way. I started with some pieces of foam that I cut down to 3 eighths of an inch thick. This is basically 10 millimeter foam if you live in a metric country and added magnets to the edges exactly as I show in the magnetic building system video. Except this time I also added magnets to one side to connect them to floors. I did this using super glue over a thin layer of hot glue to make sure that they held well but didn't melt the foam. If you need any tools or supplies for your builds or just want to know where I get all of this stuff, there are links in the equipment list which is linked in the description. If you buy things through the Amazon links that are on that site, you can help support the channel just a little bit for absolutely no cost to yourselves. Magnets obviously need to be on whatever side you want to be on the inside. Putting magnets on walls means they're no longer reversible unless you put magnets on both sides, which you can do but is kind of up to you. Which side is outside is important for two reasons. One, because some tiles will have outside features like ivy or moss, and two, because doors are closer to one side than the other, so choose the outdoor side based on which side you'd like the door closest to. 
I chose keeping it closer to the indoors to give the outside a nice little overhang, which is usually how I assemble them anyway. I did make some pieces like the door frame, a window and a couple of walls with magnets on the outside edges too, hidden under the wood. This is for some future additions like balconies and stuff, optional but it'll save you making more later. Once the magnets were attached, I tacky glued some balsa wood strips to the outside and inside. On the inside, I cut some little slots to fit them around the magnets and keep them flush with the surface of the balsa. These I wire brushed to deepen the wood grain before tacky gluing them in place. I chose balsa wood instead of foam here, mainly because I really don't like foam as a wood material. My local foam doesn't take the wood grain texture of either technique very well and is an absolute pain to paint and dry brush. Balsa wood on the other hand looks amazing wire brushed and is extremely easy to paint using some Army Painter Strong Tone Dip. Piece of advice? Stir the tin and don't use a brush that you care about. I painted these bits first to avoid getting the sloppy dip on the texturing. I gave these a spray of matte varnish before the next step to remove the tacky stickiness of the dip. I didn't bother with too many accessory slots on this one because they'll be far harder to hide and I have another idea to improve that system hopefully coming soon. I chose to keep them confined to a few of the walls which I could put wherever I wanted to put accessories. To make the ones that I did, I pushed the cocktail stick in at a 45 degree angle as usual, but didn't bother keeping them symmetrical like I usually do. I did however put two of them together sometimes about an inch apart so that I could use the two prong accessories like the banners or the manger. Between doing this and carving some cracks in the daub with a clay sculpting tool afterwards, I think they do a passable job of blending in as damage. To get the nice detailed effect on the walls, I grabbed some black grout and brown grout. Basically the stuff I used to make dirt in the grasslands or cave video and mixed it up to a nice mud colour. To get it to stick where I needed, I slapped on some PVA glue and sprinkled the grout over the top before turning the tile upside down and tapping the excess off. Some areas where I missed and got some on the wood, I left and once it was sealed in, I just used it as extra dirt weathering. This was the reason that I mixed up that colour, though honestly the amount of effort it took to get it back to cream, I might just go with white tile grout in future. I'll experiment with it a bit to check it won't mess with the wood and I'll let you know in a future video where I use these tiles. In other areas where it was too thick, I cleaned it off with a damp paper towel. Which is another good reason for that matte varnish layer. Once I had that, I left it flat and mixed up some of the sealant mix that I've shown before, mixed with some extra isopropyl alcohol mixed in. I dripped this on the grout with a pipette, which are nice and cheap and well worth picking up the useful hobby tools. I left these to dry for a few hours and then did the other side. These do take a while to dry, but when they do, they'll be fairly tough because of the grout. Painting this was pretty simple, if a little time consuming because of the dark base colour. I used a 50-50 mix of tan and white to get a nice cream colour and painted it in multiple coats. I wasn't too worried about missing spots or getting paint on the wood, mainly because if anything that just adds some authenticity. Any exposed material on these kinds of walls would look like mud, because it more or less was. And any paint splatters just look like the work of a lazy peasant! <laughs> Once that was all done, I gave the piece a spray of matte varnish and just called it done. The windows were pretty much exactly the same, except with a 7 eighths of an inch square cut into the top in the centre, with some balsa wood strips glued in around the edges to fit the existing windows from my previous build nicely. I also made a few basic shutters for the peasant building because they begged me. Please sir, we're too poor for windows. They're pretty much just double layered balsa with a cocktail stick glued on the bottom and hinges made of cereal card. Check out how I made doors in the magnetic building system video and it's basically exactly the same but smaller. To paint it, I just stained it with Army Painter Soft Tone Wash to give it a slightly different colour to the other wood. The door tile, meanwhile, was made using the small door template you can download free from my Patreon linked below to cut a door shape into the foam. Once I'd cut the template in, I squashed the edges and the bottom with the back of a brush to be able to fit planks of balsa in while still allowing the door to fit. This can be a little bit trial and error, you can see here where I had to double layer the balsa to make up for where I trimmed away too much. To hide stuff like that, I covered the edges and floor at the front with balsa strips and trimmed a bit away at the top with a knife to allow the door to fit. Finally, I added a hole at the top and bottom just as I show how to do on my other doors in the magnetic building system video and added a door from that video too, which again saves you having to make another door. 
Finally, for walls, I did two triangular walls, basically the same as I show for the wood versions in the modular roof video, just using balsa instead of foam strips and adding the grout. I added two accessory slot cracks to one side of the walls, so I can hang a banner from there or rotate them if I don't want to use those slots. The rest of these pieces were basically the same as the walls, so here's some shots of the finished pieces while I say thank you to my generous patrons, without whom these videos would not be made. Slowly I'm working my way to being able to make these videos for you guys without worrying that work is going to tear me away. So thank you so much to anyone who contributes to keeping the channel alive. This video topic was actually voted for by my patrons. Well, the cottage bit anyway. The system improvements are just me obsessing over time. Now that's all very well and good, but I wanted to include some extra detail on these walls. They're looking very plain and clean, and I've been aiming to include some extra weathering features in my builds. To start with, I used some Woodland Scenic's Burnt Grass Fine Flock. I usually use Luke's Flock from Geek Gaming, but the sheer variety of colour and texture in them that makes them great for most things makes them not so good for moss, at least in my experiments. Full credit to Jeremy of Black Magic Craft for the mix and flock of choice here. He did a fantastic video on it a little while back. I mixed this with some PVA glue and water and used the paste on the bottom of the tiles. I kept it thick in the corners and spread it out a little bit thinner as it spread upwards to give that kind of look where the moss is creeping up the wall. This gives an awesome look when it dries, which I think mirrors the real life random patterns of moss quite well. Around this on all the new wall tiles, the old stone tiles, as well as on some of the new columns that I show later, I added some more of the dirt mix that I've shown how to make in the cave video. You can use this stuff as weathering powder to add some dirt to the lower areas where dirt might settle. I was quite sparing with this and sealed it in with some more matte varnish. Finally, as these tiles are going to be used in some fairly similar places, if not always on the same buildings, I felt safe adding some crawling ivy to the outside of the walls. I made these partially because I wasn't particularly happy with how the hanging moss accessory turned out, and I kind of wanted to experiment with including it on a tile itself. To make the ivy, I wanted to experiment with some new methods. I untwisted and stained some jute twine with brown wash. I experimented with a few different types, but ended going for this rich, vivid red-brown. I got this by mixing two drops of Burnt Umber Acrylic Ink, which is basically the same stuff that I use in that black-brown wash, so you probably already have it, into a shot glass filled about one eighth full with water. To get it on the twine, I just dunked it and then brushed off the excess. This didn't end up staining very well, and I think in future I'll unthread them more and soak them in the mixture and dry them out after a day or something. Once it was dry, I spread them out into the shapes that I wanted, in this case a strand spreading out from a corner, and some spreading across the middle of the tile, and I hot glued the ends to a barbecue skewer to make it easier to hold. Once I had those in the shapes that I wanted, I sprayed them with some Super 77 spray adhesive in the air, and sprinkled on some dark green leaves from Geek Gaming over a fresh, non-sticky bit of newspaper so that I could recover the spare leaves. I did this in a well-ventilated area, and while wearing a filter mask to keep the floating liquid glue out, because I'm taking no risks breathing that in. Once the sticky little gits were dry, I cut them off the skewer and attached them by laying the tile out flat, pushing them in where I wanted, and then dripping on some Zap Liquid Super Glue. The idea with this was that the stuff would seal it solid without being too obvious and visible on the tile beneath. The first attempt didn't exactly turn out great. I had tested out the super glue on the twine before, but apparently something reacted badly and the whole lot sort of frosted over. I suspect this was the grout dust that I used for weathering on the tile itself, because I tested the super glue on the twine and on the flock, and neither of those things reacted in this way independently. So theoretically, you can avoid this by just not putting the weathering grout on until after you've attached these pieces. But in future, I think I might just give it several coats of scenic sealant instead. I did add another layer of super glue and added some more leaf flock, which mostly covers the floor and keeps it more durable, but did make it a bit thicker. I'd be lying if I said it was how I wanted them to turn out, but they still turned out pretty okay. It also didn't help that the matte varnish frosted over too. I'm having some pretty bad luck with frosting effects right now. Now these pieces won't stack as well as other tiles, but they do fit nicely in the homemade storage box that I showed recently. The Zap Super Glue keeps the ivy pretty solid, so I'm not really worried about these coming off. The quick way of doing these wall tiles is pretty similar, but lacks the grout effect that blends into the planks and adds that realistic, highly detailed look. 
To make it, I took the same piece of foam and just textured it with tin foil and sprayed it cream using a water-based spray paint that you can find in my equipment list. Now, some might say, oh, you can just use normal spray if you're careful. And normally you'd be right. But in my tests on this foam, normal spray came out with lots of bubbles, even when sprayed with light coats from a distance. The water-based spray also had this problem, but with the thicker coat that I was able to apply, the bubbles sealed together into a smooth finish. Anyway, apart from that, I stained the wood plank separately and glued them on afterwards. This was a ton faster and will probably be the method that I use to build towns, whereas the detailed tiles are what I'll use to make specific buildings that the players are almost certainly going to be going inside. Just to let you guys know, by the way, I've been doing a lot of time consuming videos recently and between that and my day job and my tax deadline coming up, I'm gonna need some time in December to deal with life. So I might get less videos or some smaller videos out in December, but they will still be there. Anyway, now onto roof pieces. I love these modular roof pieces, I really do, but they do have one flaw, and that is they lock you into one kind of roof topping? Oh, for God's sake, it's not a pizza. Yeah, so you make one and that's the only look you have. Well, not anymore. To fix this problem, I went back to, surprise, surprise, magnets. I gently cut the tiles off the roof pieces to see if I could safely reuse them, which it turns out I could. Victory is mine! Victory is mine! Great day in the morning, people! Victory is mine! So armed with those and the thatch tops that I'd pulled off that earlier build, I attached them to some serial card close to the top with hot glue so that it wouldn't warp. To make the attachment system, I just super glued on four half-inch strips of tin from a tin can lid to the corners. I then put four magnets in each roof tile in corresponding corners, and job done. Removable tiles and thatch. I can use this to swap thatch for tiles like I've done here, or to make some different colour tiles or more mossy, heavily weathered or damaged tiles for other rooftops nice and quick, without having to remake the whole damn roof. I did the same thing with the roof end pieces and also took the opportunity to replace the foam wood edges with more balsa wood, just because it looks better. This new method can also make the roof toppers less fiddly to attach. I tore the old connections out and added a wide strip of paper that just slots in under the tiles and is held in place by the magnets. This means the topper is held firmly in place on all rooftops and just slots over the other side without nearly as much fiddling. The magnetic attachments also mean you can slide the tiles down to have them hanging over the edge or not, depending on whether or not you need them to be able to line up with other buildings or rooftops. I also added magnets to the edges of the tab slots too, in case you want to throw them down quickly in the middle of a game. I was worried these would be a little bit less stable in this way, but because I used bigger 6mm magnets, they're really not. As one final touch, I made some new stone and wood columns. The wood ones are ridiculously straightforward. They're just half inch square balsa wood, cut down and stained with magnets in it like any other column. Though I've started adding magnets in the top and bottom of these columns too, so they can stack vertically. The stone ones I made with blocks of foam, which I impaled two at a time on a cocktail stick before hot gluing them together, clipping down the cocktail stick at each end to add room at the top and bottom for magnets. I then added said magnets and textured it with tinfoil. This made the piece far more resilient than my earlier stone columns, and also a little bit nicer looking too. They can also be used together with my older columns to make, well, nicer looking columns. And there it stands. Fixes for three problems with modular tiles, all built into a very nice looking new build in this cottage. Oh, which can transform into a very nice looking townhouse for city encounters too, because modular. All totally playable, layer by layer, remove rooftops, remove walls, even remove entire floors and play on both at once. Please subscribe, like and comment, and until next time, I'll be in the archive.